It is our custom at Spring of Hope, and I would ask that you would bear, indulge with me, and stand in reverence to the reading of the word. Psalm 10 and 1. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? Psalm 83 and 1. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. Job 13, 13 through 15. Hold your peace. Let me alone that I may speak and let come on me what will. Wherefore do I take my flesh in my teeth and put my life in mine hand? Though he slay me, yet will I trust him, but I will maintain my own ways before him. Before you sit down, just look at your neighbor, look him straight in the eye. If you owe him some money, look at the bridge of their nose. And repeat today's subject and say, when God is silent, just shut up. You may be seated. God is silent. Just shut up. Now there's something wonderfully strange about silence. For we who live in a noisy world, the sound of silence sometimes is a welcome sound. When we are tired and worn down, sometimes we welcome silence. It's during the quietest and sometimes the darkest periods of night that we often find our greatest rest and peace. But there are also times in most of our lives when silence is not welcome, nor is it wanted, especially if that silence comes from God. The songwriter said it this way, the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. For those who hurt deeply, the silence of God is deafening, and we often have to ask the question, does God really care about my situation? Is God even near? And if he is, then why is God so silent? Now, from the Good News translation of the Bible comes these same two powerful lines from the Psalms written by two different folk, but both devastatingly honest poets. Persons who have drunk deeply from the wellsprings of life and who know the quickening candor of the human heart at that painful and personal moment when it feels like God has a abandoned them and left them all alone. The first line from the first verse of Psalm 10 in the Good News Bible says, Why are you so far away, Lord? Why do you hide yourself from me when I'm in trouble? And although one psalm written by David says, In the time of trouble he shall hide me, this psalm says that when we are in trouble, God hides himself. Uh, why are you so far away? Why do you hide yourself when we're in trouble? It feels that way because God is silent. Now the other line is from the first verse of Psalm 83. And the Good News Bible reads as follows. Oh God, do not keep silent. Do not be still. Do not be quiet. Sisters and brothers, you can agree that when we need a word from the Lord, sometimes God is quiet. When we need an answer from the throne of grace, sometimes God is silent. When we need a word of hope in a hopeless situation, sometimes God is silent. When we need a message of mercy in a messed up set of circumstances, sometimes God is silent. 
when we need a grace note to transpose the jangling discord and dissonance that I heard all around us, a grace note to transpose all that into the harmonious symphony of what doth not yet appear, God still seems to be silent. When we want something to say or want to hear something from God some way, anything, God, yes, no, maybe, something, wait a while, in the by and by, God has the nerve to be silent. And the psalm writer who has been there cries out, oh, God, do not keep silent. I just wonder tonight, have you ever been there? If you haven't, just touch somebody and say, keep on living. You see, you'll get there. As much as our modern pop religion hates to admit it, Scripture says there are some times when God is silent. And I know we've got folk who hear from God every day. I'm sorry, Superintendent. I begin to wonder about folk who the Lord is talking to them all the time. Because sometimes I don't hear nothing from God. And I start to wonder why God ain't talking to me. And he's talking to you five, six, seven times a day. The Lord told me what route to go to work. The Lord told me to do that. The Lord, told, I was speaking to the Lord the other day. The Lord talked to some of y'all more than he talked to Jesus. But the scripture says there are times when God is silent. And as much as this goes against the grain of our American understanding of prosperity, you know God giving us all the riches we want when South Africans starve to death. Uh huh. As much as it goes against our treating God as some type of cosmic bellhop, you know, we tell him how to hop. And he jumps there, just asks for the gift, honey, and he gives it to you. Scripture says there are times when God does not answer us. There are times when God is silent. So you see, God reveals himself, yes. He makes himself known to us, yes. But God also conceals himself. Isaiah 45, 15 says, truly, you are a God who hides himself. God conceals himself and sometimes he makes himself known to us just as much if not more in the concealing as he does in the revealing. You'll get that later on. In fact, I'm convinced that one of the things God wants us to learn from these times of silence is that God is doing some revealing of himself in the concealing of himself. He is both imminent and transcendent. He's both revealed and concealed. Well, let me tell you what can be learned from those times when God is silent. Sometimes I help. David says, I look into the hill from whence come my help. Sometimes I help in coming. Sometimes our help is silent. But not only that, not only silent, but sometimes he's nowhere to be found. Job said in Job 23 and 3, how I wish I knew where to find him and knew how to go where he is. Sisters and brothers, God hides himself and is silent. Job said, I've searched in the east, but God is not there. God hides himself and is silent. Job said, I have not found him when I searched in the west. God hides himself and is silent. Job said, God has been at work in the north and the south, but still I have not seen him. God is silent. Job said the wounded and dying cry out, but God ignores their prayers. God hides himself and is silent. And even Jesus, when he was quoting the 22nd Psalm, said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And I too have cried desperately for help. But sometimes it doesn't come. Sometimes God hides himself and sometimes God is silent my sisters and brothers uh, we've got to wonder what kind of god is this that we serve when uh, people are suffering all over the world uh, and god is busy being silent 
Black children throughout Africa can't go to school, can't find work, and have nothing to eat, while black children in Springfield and in New, and in New York won't go to school, don't want to work, and expect everything to eat, and God is still silent. We, we, we've got no money to educate our inner city children who happen to be black and brown, but we do have money to wage war in Iraq and Afghanistan. We do have money to send those same children to an early and unnecessary grave wearing the uniforms of a country that will not make funds available for making geniuses, only for making war. This country will exterminate them, but not educate them, and God is silent. Martin gave his life for the cause of a more humane and just society and a reordering of an economic priority in a society gone insane with self-interest and sick military solutions for every problem. And now, years later, none of those issues are gone away and many of them have gotten worse and God is silent. We're still at the bottom of the economic ladder. There's a resurgence of racism. We've traded Vietnam for Grenada in the Reagan years, for Panama in the Bush years, for Afghanistan and Iraq in the Bush years. Come on, somebody. Martin's dream has turned into a nightmare, and it seemed like God is still silent. But I'm here to tell you that there's a lesson that we learn when God is silent. The first lesson we learn is the lesson of frustration. Let the whole house say frustration. You see, it's frustrating to want answers for life's most difficult question, and none of them are forthcoming. It gets frustrating when you're talking and somebody is silent. Am I talking to somebody in here? And sometimes we're talking to God, and I know that there's some brothers in here saying, uh-huh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, frustration is frustrating to get knocked down like Job, to get strung up like Jesus, to get picked on like Elijah, to get messed over like some of you have been, and God is silent. It's frustrating to expect God's help and instead only get a holy hush when God is silent. It's frustrating to expect solace and instead to get silence. Frustrating to hear no explanation, to be left alone in silence to try to figure out for yourself what have we done to feel the way we're feeling and to have to go through what we're going through right now. Am I preaching to anybody who's ever been frustrated? You see, it's frustrating to try to piece together in your own mind what it is that you're going through to understand what it is that's happening to you. Why is it that you're feeling the way you're feeling while wondering at the same time, where is God and what is God doing? I, I've been giving my tithe. I've been faithful to the church. I've been doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing, Lord, and I see you blessing him over there, and he's not living nothing. I see you blessing her over there, and she don't tithe, and she don't come to church, and Lord, I'm wondering why things are happening in my life like they're happening. Anybody ever been frustrated with God? Come on, can we just be real for a moment? I know we're hand clapping and foot stomping, hallelujah, anyhow, folk, but sometimes we get frustrated with the Lord. Uh, we wonder what it is that God is doing. Why doesn't he comprehend our situation, Lord? Why aren't you hearing me? Why aren't you answering me? Come on, somebody. I, I, you told me if I ask what I will in your name, and I've been asking, and you ain't been saying nothing, Lord. What is going on? And then sometimes our situation of silence is compounded by what I like to call those folk from Missouri. Don't y'all know some of them folk from Missouri? You know, those are the show me folk. I got to see something before I believe it. You know, Job in our text had some folk from Missouri. He had those show me folk. He had friends who wanted to see it rationally. What's the problem? Show me. You know you've done something, Job. Come on, somebody. That's why God is silent. It's 
frustrating. Come on, Elijah had those folk from Missouri. Jezebel said, well, your God is tough, right? Uh-huh. You got to show me because I'm going to do to you what they told me you did to the prophets of Baal. Now show me that your God can stop me. And God was silent. It's frustrating when God is silent and the crowd is still passing by wanting to know if everything you've been shouting about, everything you've been singing about is really real. Come on. Have you had those folk on your job you've been testifying to and then you got laid off but they didn't and they serve, they, you don't, you serve God and they don't? Come on, do you have neighbors like that? They see you going to church every week. Come on here. Uh-huh. And then stuff happens in your life. But I thought you were saved. I thought God was going to bless you. I thought God was going to heal you. Come on, somebody. I thought God was going to make a way. I thought God was going to bring you out. Jesus even had show me folk. That no good thief on the cross had the nerve to say, show me. You say you're the son of God. Uh, you saved others. Uh, let me see you say, save yourself. Uh, let me see you come down off this cross. Uh, the devil stood up with Jesus in the wilderness and said, show me. Come on here. Uh, uh, if you're the son of God, make these stones bread. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by the every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Sometimes God is silent and the crowd is standing by watching you. They've got the microscope on your situation. Uh, they're looking at you through a telescope. They're watching you go through your trial. They're watching you go through your tribulation. They're watching your daughter get pregnant. They're watching your son go to jail. They're watching your car get repossessed they're watching your house get foreclosed on they're watching you go through sickness in your body all the time while you're serving God and God has the nerve to be silent y'all please sit down it's rude to stand while somebody's preaching we've got the lesson of frustration but the second lesson we learn is that God, watch this, this, this is going to get you here. God communicates through the silence. Just touch somebody, whisper it in their ear, tell them I won't tell you a secret. God communicates through the silence. You see, we are a noise oriented culture. We get up in the morning. The noise. Turn on the TV to Good Morning America. I like quietness in the morning. We're a noise oriented culture. We got to hear the morning news, the weather report, the traffic reports. We ride to work listening to the radio. Some of y'all like that elevator music. Some of the saints listen to gospel. Other folk listen to something else as they ride to work. And do you realize that what we call soft music in our noise-oriented culture has become known as elevator music because we don't want to be in the elevator alone in silence. We, 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 we don't like silence. We even have background music in department stores to help us shout. Background music in the restaurants. Come on, somebody. You can't even be on hold. without playing some music. We got music in the movies to let us know what's going on. We got chase music. Come on, they chasing the bad guys, they play a certain tune. Uh-huh, yeah, 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 yeah. We got love scene music. We got fight scene music. We just need a lot of noise. We're a noise-oriented culture. Uh, uh, our children, teenagers, young adults, adults walk around plugged into their iPods, iPhones, Androids to keep away the deadening threat of T-Man. T-Man. T- huh? We're always plugged in somewhere because we're afraid of silence. Our children are enamored with the hip-hop 
culture, our sisters uh, with reality TV, our men with the sports channel. Matter of fact, we're missing the Steelers game right now. Oh, my, 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 my. We come home in the evening, turn on the television just for background noise. We even have a timer on the TV to shut itself off after we've gone to sleep. We're such a noise-oriented culture that sometimes, watch this, God has to use silence just to communicate with us. Sometimes God wants us to shut up so we can hear and sometimes God will keep silent just in order to get us to listen more attentively. Listen to our prayers and hear just how foolish and selfish some of them are. God wants us to shut up some time and listen to him. Listen carefully to what he's already said. Listen to what God is saying. Listen to what we missed in haste. Listen to remember that sometimes God does not speak in the thunder. Sometimes God does not speak in the earthquake. Sometimes God does not speak in the storm, but out of the whirlwind in a still, small voice that you can't hear when there's a whole lot of noise. Oh, my God. Second lesson we learn when God is silent is the lesson of communication. Sometimes God can only communicate to us in the silence because we've got too much happening around us that we can't even hear from God. You see, oddly enough, in pastoral counseling, one of the things that they teach us about communication is the difficult art of learning how to listen. Just shutting up and being silent and listening. And when I say listening, listening, I, I don't mean just being quiet long enough while the other person's talking and waiting for them to take a breath so we can jump in and tear down what they're saying. That's not listening. That's just waiting. But I, I'm talking about being silent and listening to what the other person is saying. And from my own prayer life over the last 20 years or so of being ordained, I'm convinced that God will use silence to listen to us and to engage us in the art of communicating with him. And too often we feel as though we've got to make a whole lot of noise and we've got to pray some deep prayers and then when we get done praying we say thank God amen and have not listened to one single word that the Lord has said. Well can I take you back to school just for a moment? You see, there are a couple things that we learned as children that we need to relearn as saints of God. A couple things that we learned when we were taking tests in school. Uh huh. First thing you got to understand is that you cannot ask the teacher any questions when you're taking the test. Because the teacher is giving you the test to see if you've already learned from what they've already taught you. It's not time to raise your hand and ask what the answer to this is or what the answer to that is. The teacher is saying to you, I already taught you those answers. Now it's your turn, uh, come on here, uh, to show me that you learned your lesson. And so one of the things that the teacher says to you while you're taking the test, first of all, is no talking. Shh, be quiet. You keep talking, I'm going to send you out the room. The rest of them are trying to take the test. And many of us go through our trials in life, go through our tribulation in life, and we do too much talking and moaning and complaining about what we're going through. Complaining to this one, complaining to that one, complaining to God. And God is trying to tell you the reason why I'm silent is because I'm waiting for you to shut up. Would you look at your neighbor and say, when God is silent, it just might be time for you to shut up. Shh. 
so 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 the teacher says first of all you can't talk during the test you got to be quiet during the test you got to concentrate on the test and do the best that you can the other thing that the teacher tells you while you're taking the test as you're glimpsing over at your neighbor's paper keep your eyes on your own paper come on somebody and too often many of us while we're going through we're busy looking at what's going on with this sister and what's going on with that brother we're too busy trying to compare our situation with their situation we're too busy trying to look at how God is blessing somebody else and what's happening over there and God is saying don't be worried about what I'm doing with them you've got to concentrate on what I'm doing with you Oh, my, 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 my. Please sit down. I'm almost done here. But look at somebody as you sit and say, keep your eyes on your own paper. So we learn the lesson of frustration. And we learn the lesson of communication. Sometimes God has to be silent to get us to shut up long enough to hear him. We can sing together, but we can't talk at the same time. Oh, my, my, my. Psalm 22 and 2 says, I call at night, but get no rest. You, were, you may remember the song from the church tradition, In the stillness of the midnight, sacred secrets he'll unfold. God will use silence to communicate with us. What did the prophet say? The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Let God's silence signal. The final thing I want to tell you is to let God's silence signal your anticipation. You're going to go through frustration because God is trying to teach you communication. And once you learn how to shut up long enough to communicate with God, then you've got to learn the lesson of anticipation. Would you look at somebody and say, anticipation? Used to have a commercial when I was young. Uh, a Heinz ketchup commercial. It would say, it's the best ketchup there is. He flipped the bottle upside down and it was so thick and delicious. But it took a while for the ketchup to come down. And the theme song was anticipation. It's making me wait. And I want to tell you sometime God has to make you wait. But while you're waiting, you've got to learn how to anticipate to what God is doing. You see, you got to understand that we will understand it better by and by. That's anticipation. Anticipation is God is fixing it right now, even though I can't see how. Anticipation is while I'm trying to figure it out. God is already not working it out. God has already worked it out. Ah, uh, anticipation. Job was sitting there on an ash heap when he's having this conversation in our text. His folk from Missouri came up to him. You know the story. He got the news flash. All your children are dead. Your cattle is gone. Everything is destroyed. His wife comes in, tells him, curse God and die. Friends come in and wonder what did you do for the Lord to be punishing you like he is right now. Job is sitting there on an ash heap because his body has broken out with boils and that's the only way he could find any comfort and he's sitting there on this heap of degradation. God already had a plan of restoration. You've got to learn how to wait with the expectancy that God is doing something about it. So Job says, though he slay me, 
yet will I trust him. Job understood that God uh, was going to work on it. He said, my foot have held his steps and his way have I kept and not declined. Uh, I have esteemed his word more necessary than my daily food. And after he have tried me, I shall come forth uh, as pure gold. Uh, he had anticipation uh, that there was something that was going to happen uh, when this trial was over. Would you touch somebody and tell somebody there will be glory after this uh, oh yeah 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 would you tell somebody else God is doing something about it yeah yeah when those folk from Missouri come by telling you to show them something you tell them I don't need to show you anything because we walk by faith and not by sight Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You see, my sisters and brothers, I believe in the sun, even though it's not shining right now. Uh, oh, I believe in God, even when God is silent. That's anticipation. Anticipation is that faith is the substance of what I hope for, evidence of what I cannot see, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. Oh, my God. God. Anticipation is to believe in spite of uh, and not because of. Oh, my God. Uh, hmm. uh, does anybody have the faith to learn how to wait on the Lord? And no wonder how Isaiah said, uh, oh, my God, the weary would faint. The young men would utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew God I feel this air their strength they shall mount up on wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint would you touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor wait God help me here uh, on the Lord uh, you've got to anticipate uh, that the Lord woo, uh, is going to work it out uh, that though God is silent uh, he is yet present uh, would you touch somebody uh, and tell them I know he's silent uh, but he yet present um, and God is getting ready uh, to bring you uh, from tragedy to triumph my 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 uh, God is getting ready to bring you from grief to glory uh, he's getting ready to transform uh, your problem uh, into a praise and uh, to change your burden uh, into a blessing uh, to turn your test into a testimony uh, is there anybody here uh, that can say when I look back over my life uh, I began to think things over uh, I can truly say uh, that I've been blessed uh, I've got a testimony uh, he picked me up turned me around uh, placed my feet uh, on solid ground say yeah. I gotta get out of here I just came by here new hope Pastor Newman I just came by here to tell you that though your road is rough your companions might be few but your God is reliable your mission is clear and we've got to determine down in our sanctified soul that we will not be bought sold compromised detoured deluded or delayed we won't be lured back turn back we won't flinch in the face of adversity hesitate in the face of trouble we won't negotiate at the table of the enemy we won't uh, 
meander in a maze of mediocrity. We won't give up. Shut up. Let up. Slow up until we spoken up for the cause of Christ. Because one thing that I know is that weeping may endure for a night. But would you touch somebody and tell them joy is coming in the morning. Yeah, I anticipate the blessing of God. I anticipate the healing of God. I anticipate the glory of God. I anticipate the miracle of God. I anticipate he's going to make a way. I anticipate he's going to bring me out. I anticipate he's going to pick me up. Yeah. Touch your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. He's getting ready to close. Bless his name. I know. Lord have mercy. I know trouble has been lurking around your house. But would you testify and say, neighbor? Oh, neighbor. Come on, help me preach it here. Preach to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. I found out the secret on trouble. Trouble will step in your house uninvited. Trouble will mess your kids up. Trouble will get in your marriage bed. Trouble will show up on your job. Trouble will get in your bank account. Trouble will get in the car with you. But would you touch that neighbor again and say, I found out that trouble Trouble got a shelf life. Trouble, trouble has an expiration date. Trouble, trouble don't last always. Say Just touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor when God is silent, I'm gonna need you to shut up. Bless your name, Lord have mercy. Because if you shut up long enough, you'll find out that the Lord been calling your name. The Lord has been whispering in your ear. The Lord has been telling you where to go. The Lord has been trying to guide your feet. The Lord. I'm done. I got to go. Bless your name. But I heard. Lord have mercy. I heard David. He put it this way. Bless his name. When he got up in years. When he went through everything that he went through. When he saw the Philistines mess all of God's people. David who ran from Abimelech. David who ran from Saul. David who was on the run. Bless his name. Who so many folk uh, scattered and killed uh, bless him name uh, but David say uh, I've seen uh, a lot of things happen uh, in my life and uh, I've seen uh, bless him name the uh, war uh, I've seen uh, famine uh, I've seen uh, bad times uh, I've seen uh, hard times uh, I've seen uh, Trouble run rapid. He said, I was once young, but now I'm old. But one thing I've never seen, I've never seen the righteous.
resist him, forsake him, nor his seed begging bread. I just want you to know that the Lord. working it out the Lord will take care of you the Lord will make a way say yes I wish I had about 10 folk that'll put your hands together and bless the Lord for your miracle Touch the person next to you and just testify to him and tell him it's already done. He already worked it out. Anticipate it. Wait for it. Praise him for it. Here it comes. It's almost morning. Your joy is on the way. Go ahead and clean the house up. Get ready for company. Joy is coming in the morning. Peace is coming in the morning.